so we're here with Alexis Nusini in his awesome and incredibly organized studio talking about his work. Um, so let's start from all the way back to the beginning. What, uh, where are you from? What kind of what got you into art? Your starts? Um, so I was born in Mexico City. Um, lived there uh, for a little bit, although obviously I don't specifically recall the details, but uh, my family lived in a more smaller town, so I was born in Mexico City just because of the hospitals and, you know, in a place like Mexico, if you have the, the ability to be in a, in a hospital in Mexico City, that's where you try and go. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I was raised in Veracruz, uh, Mexico, not, it's a, the state is a, it is one of the larger states in Mexico, but and then it's a port city as well. And I lived about an hour inland in a town called Fortín de las Flores. And my parents were cultural anthropologists, so they traveled around central Mexico interviewing uh, folks about what they were interested in, which was sort of Mexican culture and and really they were ethnographers. So they, my father specifically, met my mother in Mexico doing that research. Oh, okay. um, and so they were art lovers, they had artist friends, so I grew up sort of visiting some of those studios, and partic particularly one artist, so I, I was exposed to painting and murals and really just museums, right? It's like yeah. you go to an anthropology museum, that's art. I mean, yeah. it's you know enormous uh, stone sculptures, paintings, I mean, you know, Mexico City, one of the greatest cities in the world, so yeah, I was yeah. exposed to a lot there. Yeah. You know? And you said, you, you talked to us previously off camera, um, you said you didn't go to an art school necessarily? I, I went to a um, St. Mary's College of Maryland, so it's okay. a small liberal arts school mm -hmm. that had a, a small um, arts program, but it was pretty intense, you know, because, yeah. I mean, most... Uh, you know, most folks with an MFA and they're interested in teaching, you know, are there for a reason, you know. Yeah. It's not like it's highly compensated. I mean, they love what they do. And I think part of part of them being a, a, a smaller school made them really passionate about it. So even though um, it wasn't like a big program, um, they were really good. And, and I feel like I almost had like a MFA experience sort of like, I guess what you call seminar experience my senior year there so okay. they were you know they you know I had a show like unlike some of the BFA programs like at Tyler where I teach where it's like you're exposed to tons of like art experiences ceramics glass sculpture yeah. this place was like there was like nine of us and it was you know photography printers drawing and it yeah. was all and so we were sort of just like a small seminar style group and is that where you got into printmaking? Um, definitely. Okay. Um, I got into printmaking, so I was exposed to art. Like, my folks yeah. showed me art. We had paintings on the wall. Yeah. But, you know, they were never like, here, draw with this. And, I, and you know, I even asked one day, my mom was like, well, how come you didn't, uh, like, put me in, like, an art class or take me to, like, art centers? And she was like, well, you didn't ask. And I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> all right. But, I yeah. mean, but they instilled all of it, the love for artwork, yeah. the love for color, just the pre culture appreciation, right? Yeah. Every place, the significance of, all, of what this means for our culture internationally and locally. You know, yeah. so so yeah. Was uh, was printmaking in the beginning kind of an exploratory process for you, or did you kind of find your niche right away? No, um, honestly, no. Yeah. Um, printmaking. I mean, I, I, yes and no. I did find my niche with relief printing mm -hmm. there, but really, I took a, a class. There wasn't even a printmaking class at that school. Okay. There was a press, and that's what I mean by it just being an art program. And it all the, you know, it was small enough where it's like, if you were pulling a print, you could like peek into somebody working the table saw or oh, okay. like sculpture. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it was like yeah. here, like next door, yeah, you know? And um, so really uh, this uh, professor, Sue Johnson, who's still a, a professor there, um, saw this like, oh, you work really graphically. Have you ever made a woodcut? And I was like, no. And then they yeah. showed me uh, German Expressionist printers. And, okay. and all of a sudden I was like, wow. And then I started to remember like the artists that I had visited in Mexico and all of that. I mean, great graphic tradition in Mexican, Mexican art, Mexican printmaking. And so they just gave me a board and here's a gouger and like carve it up. Yeah. So there was no specific thing. But the minute I started carving, I think, and inking stuff up, I think that was 
was it. So yeah. the minute somebody did show me relief printing, I gravitated towards it immediately and started an all-out exploration with it. Nice. Um, and this was your BFA, right? This was my, it was a BA, because it BA. wasn't even, oh, okay. yeah, because it was yeah. Bachelor of Arts because it was, a, you know, liberal arts school. So yeah. it wasn't, yeah. it was, yeah, like a BA with a focus in art. Okay. It wasn't even, because a BFA you would specialize yeah, in yeah. printmaking, right? So no, I never even, I think I've only taken one printmaking class. Wow. On like my, yeah, yeah, officially, like I think I took etching at some point in grad school. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And... Was there any time between that and grad school? Or did you three kind of years, through? three years, uh, three years in between. No, I'm sorry, two. Two? But in between, I did do a pretty good project um, in printmaking after that. Okay. So I, um, about me to, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it yeah, was, so ahead. I, so a year, and, and again, I think this speaks again to the faculty at that school. I think, I mean, I think all faculty, I think anybody teaching yeah. at a university with like a, even tenure or like the way it is now that there's no tenure in some cases or more folks are adjuncts. I think, again, anybody's really passionate about it. Yeah. And I remember there was an adjunct there that told me about a Fulbright grant, which is like really prestigious. They're yeah. like, oh, should apply, you're fluent in Spanish, you know, just go for it. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm like, oh yeah, sure, I'm gonna get a Fulbright. I mean, not really knowing like how well known that grant is and how yeah. difficult yeah. it was. Yeah. And so um, I just applied to it really blindly. I was like, yeah. I'm, you know, I, I don't know, I grew up in Mexico, my folks were anthropologists. Um, and I love woodcuts. Let me <laughs> go to Spain and do a project in printmaking there. And I called it, sort of drawing from my folks' experience, I called it a visual ethnography of Spain. Okay. And I specifically went to Barcelona and made woodcuts on the streets of like the street scenes and yeah. like the street culture there. Okay. Yeah. You know? And wow. So, that's so like, that was before my MFA. Yeah. And then. And came back. yeah, then I came back and started working. My brother was a, a worked in film, and he was a theater theater major, and he okay. was already working in that. So I did a little scenic painting, a little lighting, that kind of you know, just anything that was like closer to what making art, right? So yeah. it's like, oh, I'll slap some paint on on some walls. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. yeah. So where did you when where did you end up going for your MFA? Uh, I went to Tyler School of Art. Oh, okay, so yeah. right here. Sorry, hey, it's we looks oh. working pretty good. Sorry, we can edit good. that. Yeah, you know. or maybe you can figure it out for him. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what's the problem, Des. Oh, it's loading. No, all right. Well, then we'll, it's just it's our internet connection. So yeah, so that's yeah. Or just figure it out, buddy. You know. Anyway. Yeah. So so yeah. Sorry. So you ended up going to Tyler? Tyler School of Art after that in 2003 to 2005. And was this more of a, I guess, traditional experience for you? you no, I mean, honestly, like when you are an undergrad and you sort of, you're going to school, for me it was like I had to go to college. It was sort yeah. of like my folks were um, scholarly and it was the expectation. I don't, yeah. I didn't have any direction. I just went, honestly, when I went to undergrad, it was like, oh, you can like major in art? Awesome, this yeah. is interesting and fun. Mm -hmm. And I always work hard, you know? I never yeah. see that like art is like, oh, it should just be fun. Yeah, you should like it, but it's hard work. I mean, yeah. and I think that's what shows in like the what I do because it's like art and craft. Yeah. You know, but it, it I, so I just didn't really know what to expect. It was just like, oh, you get another degree. You know, and yeah, you can, yeah. and, and, and I don't know, it, it wasn't traditional because the school was so big that you never know who you're going to work with. Yeah. And then I did one year in Rome, and then that faculty is always sort of changing because, yeah, yeah. and so I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know if it was like traditional, I guess in the sense of a big art school where you're able to take anything you want. I took classes in film, I, took, I was just, you know, yeah. kind of all open, so it yeah. wasn't... I mean, I'm, I think every school has its own identity, so probably no school is sort of traditional in yeah, that yeah, way, yeah. right? Yeah. You know. Um, so I guess getting away from school, talking about your work itself, with the stuff that we're seeing on the wall here, um, your work is very graphic and certainly not directly image-based. So did you kind of, was that kind of a progression into the a more abstract? Or? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I mean, I think if you know the German expressionists like mm -hmm. Katie Kollwitz or those surrounding, I don't, um, Katie Kollwitz, uh, I mean, 
Haeckel, Kirchner, I mean, uh, tons of them that were doing stuff in the 20s, uh, reacted to the war and all the situation there. I definitely just like the faces and the, yeah. and the sort of like angst. I think, you know, I don't yeah. know if I was angsty, but I was definitely, as an artist, I had that sort of like, oh, I'm... I don't know, just <laughs> yeah. like these like raw faces, and maybe I was, I don't know, just figuring it out, but I definitely like that like raw yeah. graphic force that the mm -hmm. woodcut has, and it really worked with what I was doing, and of course a lot of the stuff I had seen like in museums, right, like a yeah. lot of those totems, a lot of those archaeological things had that, so it was sort of like European and Mesoamerican sort of mix, so it was very much images and culture, and sometimes I would superimpose some like totem with like an image, a black and white image of like a classic film. Mm -hmm. So it was definitely images, and I'm not sure I, what I was doing. I was sort of more like I love culture. Here's this mashup yeah, of yeah. all of of all the stuff that I like with yeah. no specific content. I mean, there was content, but I was like, nope, I just like this image. I'm bringing it together. Yeah. And then eventually, as I was working with it, I did what I talked about was like recording like street culture and like here's this building and here are these people busking you know yeah, making yeah. money from making their street art and their and their things to yeah. then i think it was once i really started studying print mm -hmm. like really and it was personal I, like i said i didn't really take a class it's when i when i really um started exploring it and got this press yeah. um that i started really thinking about more like layering and just sort of like the the raw just like color and form yeah. You know, I was like, yeah. well, I think I think like my work speaks to what I'm interested in my background just as much without actually using images. Yeah. So ultimately, I would say the only image and what you see most here is the landscape and a very yeah. open open ended uh, view of that. Yeah. And in particular that we all share it as opposed to walls and yeah. not to so I, you know, be more more political, but that's something that I think about. It's like, wow, I was thinking about this well before our current times. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. where where I, I like the idea of a landscape that we share it. You yeah. know, that the borders are always made up, and it's yeah. you know, it's not. And so I think that's one of the still like sort of uh, I guess the content that you see outside of like the formal like mm -hmm. just line. Yeah. But ultimately, it was when I got my press that I started. Oh, you can layer this color. Oh, that you can layer this color. That 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 black isn't just black right there's gloss black matte black and everything yeah. else in between that yeah. sort of like super geeky printy stuff that i love yeah i started really focusing on yeah you know mm -hmm. so I, I would it be fair to say that a lot of your work is process based yeah, yeah yeah i mean it's a process based to be able to constantly explore right and yeah to me the most boring part of printmaking is making additions yeah. You know, I make additions, but they're all variable additions. Yeah, you yeah. know, I see each layer as an opportunity to learn something new. Yeah. You know, change of color. What does that look like in gray? What does that look like with another com combinations of my block? You yeah. know, but I see it just as an extension. You know, I mean, it is process based. It is formal. But for me, it's more of like a flow. You know, yeah. that's just like I'm trying something. Oh, all of a sudden I'm trying to VHS tape. I'm yeah. superimposing it onto a landscape. Some of them start to have these other, you know, yeah. associations. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's like, for me, it's like print is just like a flow. And, yeah. and now I start to work more with other, other artists and I've started to collaborate. And, yeah. and I think that's what that process really helps with. Yeah. Would you say there's any uh, specified relationship between, say, the more strict images that you use and the abstract, more geometric elements? I don't... I mean, I don't know how much I thought about it. I think yeah. I just gravitated towards, towards just like the formal stuff, the stuff that I love, the stuff that I like remember from my childhood, right? Yeah. It yeah. wasn't, I feel like I liked the images, but it was almost like easy, mm -hmm. you know? It's like I'm just recording something, and whereas like with, with, with the color, I think it's just more of like a feel, Yeah. you know? So yeah. I don't think I've thought about it that much outside of what I talked about with a landscape as a yeah. thing that we all share like color we all share it but we experience it very differently we're yeah. all here on this floor but you might be colorblind or yeah. or you might not see the color the same way or you might have you know less you know rods and cones and you're right to see it differently so we're all experiencing it but a little bit different and I yeah. think that's how life is on this sort of surface on yeah. this plane if that makes sense I yeah. mean yeah. you know so I don't know if I have a 
specific answer to that. I think, again, it's just sort of more culture and shared culture mm -hmm. and like what you get out of it. And I'm starting to sort of study about how like color, um, you know, everybody has their own associations with it. So I think yeah. that's kind of part tied into the landscape part. Yeah. But of that original stuff, I'm not so sure. Although I am doing other stuff. I don't know if that's on camera, but this yeah. is all the cultural exploration. I'm using images, but it's probably not something I would choose. This is okay. just for like another project that I collaborated with a lot of other artists. Yeah. So I guess in a way, I mean, it is in a way a good question because they are starting to sort of come together. Yeah. Like if you see, I mean, if I showed you these prints, you would see my color and my marks and my layering throughout some of these images that yeah. I've collaborated with. So it is sort of starting to come together. Yeah. I don't think I've quite internalized or say, oh, how am I con connecting my early stuff yeah. with this. I think the connection really is process. Like, I just love carving and squishing ink on paper. Yeah. And, you know, I just love being in here thinking about it and just messing up. And yeah. what I love about print really is like that problem solving. Yeah. You know, like that, that like, oh, I screwed this up. Let me see how I can improve it. Or mm -hmm. how can I make this registration just a little bit better? Or what's the best thing to achieve this goal? Yeah. You know, troubleshooting. How can I make a new registration system? How can I make a registration system where somebody that has never printed pull a perfect print? Yeah. That's yeah. kind of what I'm learning. And I also teach, you know, so yeah. I'm thinking about it. That, again, it's social, you know, printmaking yeah. is a social thing that we share, you know, that I think really distinguishes us from a, a lot of other arts, you know. I think yeah. all artists share, but there's just something about equipment mm -hmm. and spaces that not everybody has that sort of forces us or allows us to make those barters you know yeah. for example i have a, a printmaking student that i found out is uh is uh takes care of kids and so now they work in my shop and then after that they come and they pick up my son and take care of him and that's just like an amazing bartering this person would have never found their way into a print shop again yeah. but because of their skills with kids and education, I'm able to make that exchange. So yes. to me, that's a huge thing. Again, tied back to the landscape and this communal democratic art form. Yeah. Um, well, to go into your teaching a little bit, no. more, you teach at I teach Tyler. at Tyler and then I do workshops in this shop okay. with you know, anybody that's interested. I tutor, I mentor, and I exchange, yeah. you know, just the knowledge exchange. Yeah. How would you say that um, the teaching process has made you learn more about your own process or um your so that's a, that's a good question um i'll, I'll follow up i did a, a magazine article about that oh, yeah. um and i have some like i, I wrote it out so there, mm -hmm. it's like very a little bit more academic and specific but honestly it uh, allows me i think the key note for that it is allows me to experiment more mm -hmm. because in the sense that it's like what if you come to me with an idea and you try it. Or what if I say, oh, well, I've been thinking about printing white as a last layer. Yeah. But I could say to a student, hey, maybe you should try this. And then I see it and it's sort of like a sounding board, yeah. right? It's like, why don't you try this? And in my mind, it'd be like, well, I've been meaning to try it, but here's yeah. somebody fresh that might do it a little differently. Yeah. You know, I don't know if that makes sense, but it, it, it uh, again, it's a, it's a collaboration even with yeah. students. I'm yeah. showing them one thing and they're, looking at it in a very fresh way mm -hmm. and sometimes I'm able to just suggest something and it becomes collaborative that way it's like oh here try a stencil you know yeah. they try it a little bit that's sort of like my initial exploration and then I can go into it with my sort of expertise and sort of fanatical yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. dedication to just again you know relief printing yeah. You know. And are you and, only doing relief? Or? Yeah, I, I'm a specialist, although I do teach etching and monoprint, and, mm -hmm. but, but it's sort of like what I really know. Yeah. But like, yeah, teaching just allows me to also like learn, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's what I brought up. It's like, if I can, so here's the thing, like when you teach a printmaking class and one of the most demoralizing things for a student is they have an idea, yeah. they carve it, they spend three days carving this amazing plate and they're mm -hmm. gonna do a two color, and they put the ink on one and they have this big idea of how the next block's gonna fit over and they misregister it and yep. they lose momentum. Been there. Right? <laughs> and so I've developed systems that allow this to be near perfect and so that the student can focus, and I can show you that students yeah, yeah. can focus on just the image mm -hmm. and layering and color yeah. and the formal stuff that I think the something is more crucial. A student may never go back to woodblock. 
Yeah. And if they do, then they can follow up with me. It's like, wait a minute, what was that registration system? Yeah. But otherwise, I, I feel like I'm taking out one of the more frustrating things and you can focus on what I think is more important, which is your images, your printing skills, yeah. and your yeah. color layering and experimenting. And if you can experiment without like having a concern about registration, you're really, yeah. you know, and that's yeah. where I think I excel at. And as I'm sort of more mid-career, I'm getting really good at. Yeah. is a lot getting students to just focus on what really matters, you know, to me. Yeah. I, now, I'm not saying that I don't think it's important to ride the wave of like, oh, I messed this up, figure it out. Yeah. But why not, oh, I messed this color up as opposed to I completely misregister this. Mm -hmm. And I assign projects to misregister on purpose, you know, yeah, to yeah, like, yeah. hey, do this and stagger it, you know. Yeah. So going back into your work a little bit more, um, you do collaboration with a lot of people. Um, you talked about the stuff on this wall being yeah. a, um, I can't think of the word, being a piece you're doing for somebody. How yeah. would you say that um, work you do in those fields differs from your personal work and kind of forces you to do different things? Um, well, other other artists have other ideas, right? Yeah. Um, and I mean, first of all, it forces me to learn new things. This project was a print made in 1975 of it was a silk screen mm -hmm. and on a technical level i had to figure out they wanted me to turn it into a woodcut so yeah. first of all that just challenges me technically yeah. and with the technology that i'm using right so with this project i turned a, a silk screen from 1975 into a woodcut in 2019 by separating the colors on the computer and then routing it out on a machine Right, so that was it. But but secondly, you, you know, there's more risks, right? I mean, yeah. a lot of art, and even when it's technical and and printmaking and craft, mm -hmm. it is a risk. And like when you work with somebody else's ideas, there's always that risk: is this going to be good? Is this going to yeah. be either or? Or is it just you know, is it going to be a collaboration? So yeah. it just forces me to try something new, try different colors, right? I yeah. might not be as excited about this artist's colors, but then I can compare it to mine and see, oh, all right, I do have a my own sort of autobiographic color you yeah, know yeah. that is very much me you know and then you share and it's like no well this color does this way and it does this thing for me and it's like oh that's why i chose and it's like oh all right you know a lot yeah. a lot of these decisions is about being specific a lot about art making is decisions you know yeah. or, or lack thereof right like hey yeah. no i'm just letting it ride yeah so i think and, and it, you know, it allows me to go back to figurative stuff with working with others. And it, and it also, again, challenges me technically. Yeah. But that technical challenge will be in my back pocket when it comes down for me to do it for something I'm interested in. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I mean, it sounds a little self-serving because there is like money involved because it's a contract. But ultimately, you yeah. know, I'm still sort of sharing my knowledge. Yeah. You know, so again, it be, it's similar like with students, right? You're just sort of working out different ideas, you know? I'm just sort of more the experienced one with this technique. Yeah. And so it just challenges you to figure out, you know, something different that I wouldn't normally do. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. um, you said route out on a machine. So does that mean some of your plates are machine? -made? Uh, for, yeah, up until I bought a CNC router uh, a couple of years ago for a, for a project and I spent the grant money on it. Yeah. And now I've sort of like, I would never say perfected it because I would yeah. never say these are perfect or the plates are perfect. But I like to mix it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I like to be able to, I like to be, as I'm getting older, I like to be smart about where I spend my time. Yeah. All right. So at what, what you see here in particular, the only thing that's routed out is the first layer of that half tone. Okay. And am I capable of carving that? Yeah. yeah. But that took me two or three hours on the machine and on the computer as opposed to two or three days carving it. Yeah. But I've been thinking about making that half tone. I just can't always focus my energy on this one quick idea. Yeah. So now with a router, I'm able to just snap, practically click, rather, yeah, yeah. and I'm able to work out a quick idea. If it doesn't work, whatever, I wasted three hours, not three days. Yeah. You know, so, but, and some are completely CNC, and See. others I'm mixing it. Yeah. You know, and it allows me to work through an idea, a texture, a line work much faster. So you're yeah. Process yeah. So technology. now it's exponential. Yeah. Like I mean, I'm able to work so much faster. I did that one. I don't know. Again, not sure if it's on camera, but that was with an artist, uh, Miguel Horn, 
Yeah. And that's all digitally made other than the printing, you know? Yeah. Um, but that was because it was a collaboration, yeah. you know? And, but, but these, I just like to put elements of it. I like the idea of mixing the machine and the hand. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, it's all technology. The press is technology, you know? Yeah. It's the yeah. same thing. Like, before, you would hand print it or something. It would take much longer. Yeah. You know, or hand stencils or whatever the first iteration of printmaking was. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just advances that allow you to try different things. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is the main route that you do for work? Are you focusing on selling a lot? Are you showing? Are you kind of... Balance, anything? man. Yeah. Balance. Balance. Yeah. You got to sell work mm -hmm. if you're making... I mean, I would be doing this anyway. Yeah. So there's no feeling that I'm like either selling out or mm -hmm. like, I mean, I think that's like a strange thing for artists to have. I get it. It depends on the work. Yeah. You know, it's just my perspective. I'll work on community projects. I'll make stuff. But ultimately, I'm just in, I love this process. I, mm -hmm. I appreciate paper making, how the ink is pressed on it. Just again, isolating a specific thing again of like squishing ink on a piece of block and yeah. seeing how much you can do yeah and i just sort of fortunate that it can be a sellable thing mm -hmm. but i also make ridiculous prints where i'm just printing on like a piece of drywall tape I, and yeah. when I, so when i say balances yeah i want to sell a few prints and yeah. i also want to do something completely challenging that is it may be sellable but it would be outrageous yeah cost wise yeah you know um so so yeah that's how i see it as balance it's like gotta have a little bit of it you know yeah. i mean this is what i'm doing i don't have a full-time job i have gigs yeah you know i i does that make sense it's like i work with art consultants or i work just private collectors contact me you know I mean, there is that tension, right, between like being an artist and mm -hmm. sort of the way, you know, uh, you know, our art is now community based, conceptual, yeah. um, you know, I mean, I'm doing what I love. So, yeah. I mean, or, or what I'm really sort of like truly geek out about and there's no other place outside of like being with my family that I'd rather be. Yeah. And I combine it, as you know, my son's studio is here. Yeah. And again, that's that balance, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's, that, that's sort of me, you know? I'm still doing what I truly enjoy physically doing. Yeah. And it just happens to be that I'm making this thing that's a little more, you know, I don't know if it's sellable because they're just like giant pieces of paper and yeah, yeah. even like the framing for one of these is like $500. Like most yeah. people don't have that. Yeah. You know? Most people don't have 500 bucks alone, let alone 500 to frame something that's worth, you know, yeah. that I would try to sell for thousands, yeah. right? Yeah. So, uh, I found with a lot of Philly artists that there's this tremendous community of makers in Philly that uh, I, don't, I, I think is different than other cities. How would you say, especially in a building like this with um, a lot of different, I mean, not a lot, but other artists, how would you say the Philly community uh, interacts with you and you interact with it? Um, pretty, I mean, I, I feel it's pretty solid, right? Yeah. I mean, in a place like Philly, there's a lot because it draws a lot of artists because it's, for now, it's still mm -hmm. accessible. Yeah. You can still have a relatively cheap apartment, although I think that's changing. Yeah. So then I think it brings in a lot of people that are just piecing it together. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and I try to like help help in that. And yeah. so I allow some minimal access to my studio because I have to control it because, again, I'm a very yeah. sort of controlling guy as far as the space goes. You know, yeah. socially, I'm open to anything. But I feel like I interact pretty well, right? I mean, yeah. I like to collaborate. I feel like one of the things and specifically to printmaking but also in philly that it's more of like a diy right mm -hmm. so everybody's sort of sharing sharing like resources as opposed to like this is my cnc thing yeah. it's like yeah you want to like you know bring some beers over and you want to like i don't know have other, some other kind of exchange watch my kid for like a couple days i'll make you a routed out plate and teach yeah. you how to do it yeah, yeah. You, you you know yeah. like that's just one example of many i have other yeah. people that like update my website for press time yeah so so i think it's back and forth i certainly engage a lot with others to try and bring in here much more than i used to i just don't have the time yeah. So I think I think Philly has that. I feel like in New York, it's such like a huge hustle that it's like whatever you have, you're keeping. And I don't know, I'm not necessarily 
know for sure. I just know that New York is like a whole other level yeah, of hustle yeah. that I don't have, which is yeah. I think why I ended up in Philly. And as I've gotten to know it better, I, I do know a lot of the communities. I know I showed a lot at the, um, I was a member of an artist collective, uh, Napoleon, for six years. And yeah. even within that collective that we shared ideas and, and resources, we shared ideas and resources with the other galleries on that yeah. floor at that, you know, the, the building, mostly known as Vox Populi, but it's, you know, it's a 319 building or yeah. the Rollins building. Yeah. You know, it goes yeah. by other names, but Vox is just the biggest, most well-known. Yeah. And there's a lot of the galleries below that all share ideas and like, hey, when's going to be your opening if it's around 4th of July or whatever. Yeah. So I think, I think there has to be because there's not as many collectors. It's not like collecting is like in Miami, Cal L.A., yeah, New yeah. York. Yeah. You know, and here it's more like resources. To me, part of my formula, and that's why I call it a formula, and when you're talking about selling, it's like balance. It's yeah. like, I would rather make a little money routing out some plates for another printmaker. I mean, and it's expensive because it's like I have an overhead and I'm paying off stuff in a studio, but it's like I'd rather route out some stuff for some people, do a job like that, and then yeah. make my make my prints. So yeah. I feel like I sh sort of share those resources and you know, most people that ask me would know I'm pretty much down f for anything, you yeah. know? Yeah. Well, um, you talked about your beginnings, your education, your collaboration, your work now, educating, um, I guess to wrap up, what's, what's next for you? Any exciting new projects or um. new shows? Um, I have a show up right now at okay. Brandywine uh, Workshop and Archives, like sort of a huge sort of mm, survey of the yeah. best stuff over the past five or six years. I'll give you a catalog yeah. so you can read about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's right. I sent you the link. Um, but um, so that's sort of been like the big, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I did it. I'm working with them on this huge, uh, huge uh, sort of like, it's not a commission, but it's like uh, I'm serving as a master printer. Uh, for one of their artists so that's coming up after I take my trip to Mexico um, and um, yeah I have a couple other little shows I mean honestly after printing for other people and working at I'm sort of looking to sort of whatever is new as far yeah. as sort of my, my imagery maybe going back to working much larger um, I don't know. I probably have a, uh, a better answer to that in about six months, you know, yeah, yeah. but I have right now I'm like at a big like, ah, OK, I got to finish this huge, uh, huge, huge uh, show, printed a nice sort of nice catalog for it. I've really mm -hmm. thought about what I've done over the last six years and yeah. feeling pretty good about it, sort of like the best woodcuts of the last six years, yeah. you know, met up with some other artists, I would say. I would say a few more collaborative stuff, maybe some, maybe make a, a, a few books, mm -hmm. you know, that I have on there and then just kind of doing the same thing, waiting for the next thing to, yeah. to come to me, yeah. you know, um, but nothing huge coming up, but I don't know, maybe buy another piece of equipment, thinking about yeah. getting like a laser cutter, you know, but yeah. again, that's sort of like business, but see, first business and then all of a sudden once I own it, it can be all for all for the creative yeah. process, right? Because yeah. the CNC has limitations as far as like detail. You know, all all, all equipment, all tools <laughs> have uh, maybe that's the stereo jack. All tools have uh, um, have their limitations and yeah. their and the best you know the things that they do the best. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just new newer work. I'd like yeah. to change a little bit of the style. I think I'll never lose the color for yeah. now but yeah. you know um just just progressing you know mm -hmm. um probably more collaborations is yeah is sort of uh printing for other people meeting other artists honestly expanding outside of philly i feel like i'm sort of after this show yeah. i feel like i need to really start like as far as a career like being career minded showing in other places yeah uh just with family and having taken care of my kid for for six years i think it's i'm finally sort of ready to like you know I've shown a lot in Philly. It's not like, wow, Natini in Philly, but you know, people know me enough. I've shown yeah. in some of the galleries. Mm -hmm. So I think it's sort of time to, time to really branch out yeah. more decisively. Yeah. So, you know, really more just for now. Uh, international, it's okay. Looking for some shows in Mexico 
and you know New York crazy I've never shown anything in New York as active as I've been yeah I've been active for as a printer for almost 20 years and I've yet it's almost like I don't I don't know <laughs> it's almost yeah. like kind of like ah, do I need it mm-hmm. I don't know why not I can't it's balanced like why why you know close a door or not look in one direction so yeah. I, I would say that's it that's, yeah. the, that's the best answer branching out outside of Philly now that my kids are a little older and that I've gotten a little bit more sort of momentum in my yeah. career you know it's yeah. sort of the next move either get you know much better known outside of this or just keep on doing my thing yeah awesome well um, Alexis Nutini awesome printmaker thank you so much for having us in your studio and allowing us to come do this it's been a, definitely it's been a pleasure